What's going on, everybody? This is Alex once again with another episode of the EOT News Flash. This is episode 113. Rejoice, ye faithful, Acropolis has fallen. And it's exciting to actually have some real news to put the news in EOT News Flash to talk about today. Um, bit of a pace of change of pace for me talking about Commander decks for many, many weeks now. Um, but yeah, so today we had our banned and restricted announcement go up. Um, you know, these have been happening a lot more, or at least the announcements themselves have been a lot more frequently happening ever since Wizards decided to do them. Um, just, yeah, I think we're doing them eight times a year now, if I'm not mistaken. Usually um, once after our set releases and then a number, a couple of weeks after a uh, Mythic Championship is when these are usually hitting nowadays. And a lot of us would have thought that that was going to see a lot more changes, a lot more um, different cards coming on and off of the ban and restricted lists. But that hasn't really been the case here. And I think that's actually a good thing because nobody wants to see formats getting, you know, just completely upended, you know, weeks on end. So I, I definitely agree with the fact that the Wizards has, you know, been a little bit more... Uh, proactive about what they are banning and unbanning, but also providing context as to why things are not getting banned, uh, especially in the case of some cards we're going to talk about today. And what better place to start than with Vintage, <laughs> everybody's favorite format. Um, so the most cards got impacted in Vintage today. Um, the first two we're going to look at, Karn the Great Creator, and our, our second card here in just a minute, um, have all been restricted. So in Vintage, things work a little bit differently. Instead of just banning a card outright, occasionally cards will become restricted or unrestricted. And when a card receives restricted status, you can no longer play four of in a deck. You can only play one of. And that's where a lot of like the power nine and more, you know, just ridiculously powerful cards sort of sit within Vintage. And now Karn has... Uh, received that status as well. Now let's go ahead and look at the other card that's joining Karn, um, actually from the same deck, and it's Mystic Forge, a brand new card from M20 that basically lets you play artifacts off the top of your library, look at the top card of your library, and constantly just sort of churn through your deck and, you know, with, combina with a combination of cards like Voltaic Key and Manifold Key to keep this thing untapped constantly, you know, get rid of the excess cards at the top of your library. This, These two cards, Karn and Mystic Forge, have really supercharged the shops decks, um, which rely on the power of Mishra's Factory, or Mishra's Workshop, I should say, to power out massive amounts of mana when you combine that with the Moxen, and really just, you know, come out of the gates really, really quickly, and then being able to go and get, you know, things like a Time Vault, a Voltaic Key to go infinite with Karn, or just, you know, just go infinite in general, but using Karn to go and get those pieces to take, you know, infinite turns and eventually just, you know, grind your opponent out. Um, other cards that we're looking at here are like things like Sphere of Resistance, which are more taxation effects that can really put a hamper on your mana, especially at a format like Vintage, where things are typically costing between one and zero mana. So yeah, Mystic Forge, Karn the Great Creator, both restricted. Things that I, I definitely agree with, I follow Vintage a decent amount, and I have seen that the Shops decks have really started to take over the format, and they really want to change that, so... You know, obviously with the London Mulligan causing, you know, some games to end between, you know, one and three turns. Obviously, that's where things are going to happen in Vintage, but at the same time, you don't want to see that all the time. You want good interactive games, and so that was kind of the rationale behind those. Uh, the next card to hit Restricted Status, and also making me realize that Wizards cannot update Gatherer to have all the cards the same size in the picture. Mental Misstep. Uh, Mental Missup here um, is a one of the poster childs alongside Birthing Pod and Dismember as why Phyrexian Mana is an absolute joke. Never again should we see this mechanic. Hopefully. I can think of a couple of ways that it might be okay, but let's not look into that right now. But Mental Missup here is a single Phyrexian blue. Counter target spell converted mana cost one and it has now been given restricted status in vintage and it really kind of comes down just to the fact that a lot of games in vintage were decided on how many mental missteps you had in your opening hand and if you had what was in your opponent your opening spells were not going to resolve and that's just no fun for anybody uh, obviously this card has ever even been legal in modern that's how powerful this card is uh legacy was it was legal for i think maybe six months before it got the axe just because there's so many one mana cards well in legacy and vintage for that matter whether it's 
ponders, brainstorms, dark rituals, things of that nature. You know, this card shuts down a lot of decks, and to see it hit restricted status is a very good thing, in my opinion. Uh, next up, next up, Golgari Grave Troll. <laughs> This card just keeps coming back and causing problems for Wizards. I mean, this was originally banned in Modern, then it was unbanned, and then it was banned again because they just keep forgetting that graveyard mechanics like Dredge are just broken. And now Golgari Grave Troll has been given restricted status in Vintage. Essentially, it comes down to the fact that it interacts so well with Bazaar of Baghdad, which is a land that lets you uh, tap it draw two cards and discard three cards um, with the uh, Roland and Mulligan and Serum Powder in your deck for uh, Vintage Dredge. It lets you hit, to the, hit that card a shockingly high number of times and giving you just instant access to, frankly, a majority of your deck being flipped into your graveyard all within a matter of a couple of turns. And so Golgari Grave Troll is the highest order possible. So it makes sense that he's going to be hit with at Restricted Status. Again, something I'm very much in favor of. Too powerful for modern. Well, of course it's too powerful for vintage. And the last card that we're going to look at for vintage has been unrestricted. This is Fast Bond, and a card that some of you might not actually be familiar with because it's never really been highlighted in too many formats other than vintage itself. But for a single green mana, it gets you an enchantment. You may play any number of lands on each of your turns. Whenever you play a land, if it wasn't your first land you played this turn, Fast Bond deals one damage to you. Now... The thing about Vintage that's different from other formats is the ridiculously low land count that goes into these decks. Obviously, you have some decks that are pushing upwards of 20s, you know, mid-20s, 20, 30, 40, uh, not 30, but, but you know, mid-20s land count. But you have some that are going as far down as 11. Um, and so the decision was basically made, well, if, they're, if these decks don't have a high density of lands, a card like Fast Bond can't be all that dangerous. And I actually agree with that logic quite a bit. So this is a cool one to see come back. Um, they also noted a couple other cards that they're considering um, unrestricting uh, Windfall and Necropotence would be very cool to see come back. Always a good Necro deck. Uh, but let's turn our attention over to Standard, which did see an unbanning. And you might forget that Rampaging Ferocidon has been on the ban list for what feels like forever now. Um, this innocuous little dinosaur says that players can't gain life, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to that creature's controller. Now, I've already heard a couple people online saying, well, why even unban this? There's only a month left in its standard legality as of now, so why do this? And it's it, it's... Kind of, there's there's two reasons for it. The first one being the Black White Vampire deck that gains just absurd amounts of life and has really kind of come to the forefront in the past couple of months with the printing of the new Soren from M20 and it just being a good foil against other more grindy uh, mid rangey decks in the format like the other deck that this is used to fight against, which is Scape Shift using Field of the Dead to make just a gazillion little zombie guys. And this is obviously a great counter to that as well. Um, it is it is strange to see a card, though, come off the off the ban list with only, you know, just a matter of weeks before it's actually going to become no longer legal ever again. Um, but I have to think back to, I guess that was 2011, I want to say, ish, when both Jace the Mind Sculptor and Stoneforge Mystic were both banned in standard barely a month before they were actually going to rotate out. So Wizards has a precedent of doing this just now in the reverse, and I think it's fine. You know, it's a cool, it's, it's going to pump a little bit of longevity back into standard for the next couple of weeks. Mono Red gets a nice little tool to play against some of the other decks. And the cynic in me also thinks it's going to help sell, you know, a couple more packs of Ixalan and push a little bit of, of value to this guy on the secondary market. But we don't talk about that today. Uh, but yeah, so let's let's go into actually what a majority of Magic players, I would assume, cared about today. And that is the banning of Hogak Arisen Necropolis. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we saw the banning of Rich from Below, the Magic card that really isn't even a Magic card. Um, Wizards thought that that would be sort of the best way to take care of this deck. They were wrong. Um, there's a really great article a couple of weeks ago um, from Frank Carson over on Channel Fireball that basically calculated the number of games and the percentage of games that you would be able to hit a turn to Hogak in Modern. 
and the results were ridiculous. I believe it was somewhere in the 55% range for turn two Hogax in modern, and that's just absurd. Uh, We've clearly seen that this card is an absolute mistake. Wizards of um, Mark Rosewater even admitted this over on his blogatog over on Tumblr um, that this card was a mistake. He didn't specify it by name, but he basically said Hogak was a mistake here. Um, it's interesting that it's being banned now. I can completely understand Wizards wanting to give, you know, a shot at something else by banning Bridge from Below um, just a couple of weeks ago to see if they can slow this deck down. The card was brand new. Um, Modern Horizons had just been printed a few weeks prior to, to the banning of Bridge from the Below, and I can certainly understand them not wanting to ban a card in what at that point was a flagship product for them. Yeah, it's consumer cynicism, but that's what it is. I can get it, and maybe they really had, a, had faith in the fact that Bridge from Below would have solved the problem, but we just kept seeing it over and over and over. Every Magic Fest, every Mythic Invitational, Mythic Qualifier, what were they that were modern, had at least 50% uh, Hogak decks in the top eight, and that's just ridiculous. And obviously we saw different variations of the deck, you know, all being powered out with things like Hedron Crab of all things. Um, different flavors of it, but all aiming to do the same thing, and that was to put Hogak into play as fast as possible. Um, so I'm glad to see it gone. Um, not as much as I am to see this next card, though. And this one shocked me. Um, not because I don't want to see it banned, but just because I thought it's sort of like this sacred cow that Wizards refused to die for. And that's Faithless Looting. Finally, banned in Modern. A single red mana getting you to draw two cards and discard two cards with a flashback cost of two and a red sorcery speed. Um, this card has been on people's radar probably for the better part of the, of the last two years or so with decks like um, Mardu Pyromancer, uh, Dredgevine, uh, Mardu uh, Phoenix of the, both the Blue Red and the Mono Red variants. Dredge, obviously, Hogak decks are running this card. This card has been everywhere in modern. It's been compared to Brainstorm um, in terms of just its, its presence in the format and just the power that it provides. And they're absolutely right on that. Um, Seeing this gone is is definitely a good thing, though. You know, just the amount of power that this gives so many decks is is just really kind of ridiculous. And there are still plenty of cards that I think um, those decks can still take advantage of. So if you want to play, you know, the the Arclight Phoenix decks, you can start playing, playing things like Thought Scour, Cathartic Reunion, Tormenting Voice. If you want to get, you know really underwhelming. Um, but I think all of those cards each has a place in the decks that are losing out on Faithless Looting. Cathartic Reunion is already a powerful card in Dredge. You know, they'll have to lean on it a little bit more now, but I think that's okay. Even Thought Scour seems, you know, not embarrassing in, in Dredge decks, especially one of the versions that we're playing uh, Hedron Crab. You know, maybe they don't want to go too heavy on it, but it is an option there. Um, I have seen plenty of people say that it's going to just, you know, kick out the legs of too many decks. And while I think that's going to happen, it's not to the extent that many people believe it will. Just because what this card enables is speed in the format, speed and consistency. And consistency is fine. Modern's all about consistency through fetch lands, you know, uh, pre not pre but like Serum Visions, Jaces, you know, there's tons of card ways to accrue card advantage in Modern, but not at the speed and power level of Faithless Looting. You know, it only took one Pro Tour for Modern to see Preordain and Ponder being banned. And it's just a wonder that this card has been on the ban, um, on the not ban list uh, for as long as it has. So I am glad to see this gone. And I definitely think that we're gonna be moving into what I would consider a golden age of Modern with a little help from one more card we get to talk about today. And it's one that I'm super excited about. Stoneforge Mystic is finally legal in Modern. This card has never been legal in the format. And for the longest time, I've been like, why? I mean, <laughs> we have turn two eight eights with Trample. We have people dying on turn two from a zillion Phoenixes coming out of the graveyard. And you're telling me that this little two mana one two is too powerful. 
absolutely absurd. Now, 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 I do get it. I do get it. Um, back when it was standard legal, it was absolutely terrorizing. Um, you know, your your every table. You know, Cobblade was the deck to beat. And when you combine this with Jace the Mind Sculptor and Squadron Hawks, Batter Skulls, Swords of Feast and Famine, War and Peace. I get it. This card is powerful, and it does powerful things. But it it just kind of like helps you reframe modern, you know, with the context of what cards are capable of doing. I mean, you can kill somebody out of nowhere with grape shots for thirty damage. You know, those those phoenixes are massively powerful. Dredge decks are still gonna be firing off uh, creeping chills left and right, and this. <laughs> So poor physical is considered too powerful. Now, now I do get it. You know, um, there's always going to be the fear of playing this on turn two unimpeded, fetching up batter skull or whichever of the swords is, is sort of you know the, the flavor of the month because obviously you know this is going to open up a lot of different decks um, to play Stoneforge Mystic and so what swords you're going to be playing can be you know definitely tailored to your meta game, um, but to be able to play Stoneforge Mystic on turn two and hold up interaction from then on out until you have an opening to act at its ability and put down the equipment into play and have it ready to go. Probably better skull in that number of times. But even then, it's a 4-4 lifelinking creature. Let's let's just go over the cards that kill that thing. Path to Exile. Uh, Abrupt Decay kills the token. Um, let's see. Terminate kills the token. Uh, Colligan's Command kills the token and the equipment on it. Like, there's there's so many ways of dealing with batter skull, and I and I get, I understand that, that you know that's always been kind of a reservation there. Maybe a turn three batter skull is too powerful in the formats, but with the way that we've seen modern sort of you know ebb and flow and change with the past couple of months and you know even years now, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna be fine. Yes, you can play Cobblade in modern. I'm super excited. I have my squadron hawks already over here. But yeah, I, Stoneforge Mystic is is ready to, to show Modern what she's capable of doing. I'm super excited to, to, to play this card again. Um, it's a little expensive right now. You can't find a copy online for a bit less than about 50 bucks. So hope you already had yours. Thankfully I did. Um, but yeah, you can get the GP promo, the Judge promo. They're like there, there are options out there. And I, I, I would expect seeing it unbanned here to possibly get an unbanning, or not an unbanning, but a printing again in a future uh, supplementary product, because it's definitely a card that needs um, to be printed again to obviously facilitate the demand for it, because everybody wants to play Stoneforge Mystic, because it goes into so many different decks. Uh, Blue-White Control, I I'd imagine, plays a number of these now. Um, Cobblade literally becomes, it's, it's, it's not a new deck, but it is a, it is a, relatively new archetype to modern you know it's a lot of tempo spells and you slap a sword on a squadron hawk and just go to town um the the, the Wurza decks that are being that are just starting to prop up and take over modern right now can absolutely play this to go and get their copies of sword of the meek very cool interaction right there death and taxes can play this uh zoo decks might want to play this i can even see you know a green white hate bear deck kind of coming back with this uh, black, white, death and taxes, you know, there's a ton of really cool things that you can do with this. Heck, playing this off, off of Aether Vial in some decks, you know, is going to be absolutely amazing and very, very powerful. So there's a lot of ways um, to take advantage of Stoneforge Mystic and all that she can do in the format now. It very well could re-energize the stock that we have in things like Fatal Push and Lightning Bolts. So maybe Jeskai Control kind of comes back to the forefront over Blue White, having such a good, great, a great matchup against you know the other creature decks like Humans. Who knows though? Like, there's so much opportunity here with things like Hogak and Fatal Swooting going out of the format now that are going to open decks back up. We no longer have to main board for Leyline of the Void. Like, that was the most played card in Barcelona. Leyline of the Void in the main board. <laughs> Just ridiculous. We don't have to devote too many sideboard slots to this now. We can open up our sideboards. The format is able to breathe and start to regulate itself under its own, you know, just gameplay 
Like that's what's going to be the regulating factor in modern now is we're going to see ebbs and flows. We're going to see a graveyard deck on a week that no one brings their graveyard hate. That's okay. We're going to see a combo deck that's going to come in because people were planning for something different. We're going to see it shift around and that's the way that modern needs to be. And I'm super excited that some version mystic is finally going to be part of that. And now we just wait patiently for Splinter Twin. Anyway, uh, yeah, so that's that's it for today, guys. Um, just wanted to put this together for you guys and review um, the cards that were that are coming off of the band list and whatnot. Um, let me know down in the comments, are you excited for these bands? I can't imagine there's anybody out there who did not want to see Hogak Band, regardless of any success that they have had with it. Faithless Loading, I, I get it. I, I can understand there's you out, you out there that are uh, a little bit better. But uh, hey, Silver Mystic. So yeah, don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel everybody it's been great talking to you as always and we'll see you guys later this week